Faulkner. San Diego's homeless population has reached record highs since the start of the pandemic. And according to a recent count, more than 4,000 San Diegans are living on the streets countywide. Joining me this morning to address this problem and possible solutions is the president and CEO of the San Diego Rescue Mission, Donnie D. Donnie, good morning. Thank you for joining me. Good to be here with you. Well, I will tell you, um, you have such an interesting career. Uh, you started uh, in athletics, uh, in the NFL, for a couple of years. Uh, and then how did you find yourself transitioning to running one of the most important, not just shelters, but a mission that helps people get their lives back on track? Yeah, uh, thanks for that. It has been quite a journey. I um, grew up in an athletic family and so found myself playing a lot of sports, had the opportunity to play college and professional sports. And, and I think sometimes that tackling and, and hitting a 290 pound lineman is easier than running a rescue mission but uh, I love what I'm doing and uh, and I left uh, an organization that I had been with for 27 years because I just felt a, a calling uh, on my life to do this and and I also wanted to just leave this place better than I found it my wife and I have been here for almost 30 years now and our kids went to school here our, my son went to USD my daughter to UCI they both played basketball and and I've taken a lot from Southern California and felt like that if I could be a part of helping to figure out this homeless situation then my time here, I would have left it better than I found it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, when, when you came in 2017, I, I vividly remember you really had that sense of, of urgency. And one of the things that you said, you said, I want to change the state of homelessness in San Diego. I want to be a leader. I want the rescue mission to be a part of that. And in fact, you do that without any government dollars. Hmm. Um, tell me what tell me what you do there at the rescue mission, and how is it how are you really changing those lives and, and really turning things around? Well, we have a hundred thousand square foot facility in downtown San Diego in Bankers Hill, actually, and it's a three hundred sixty bed facility. And so we take people in. Three hundred of those beds are used for faith based twelve month rehab, which I believe is the solution uh, to our homeless situation. Is we have to address the issues of the heart. There is a drug and alcohol component. There is a housing component. There is an early childhood trauma. Uh, component. There is domestic violence component, but until we begin to really address the issues of the heart, all we're really doing is moving people around. And so what we do is we take them in, we call them students, and for 12 months they work through a program, a, a clinical, a therapeutic, a job training, a, a spiritual program. And by the end they go through a graduation and cap and gown and they walk yeah. across the stage and, and uh, you've uh, participated in yeah. that in the past. And it's really a highlight for us because these are people that put in the work to overcome homelessness uh, in their life well and, and I have been there and I will tell you to see the smile on on people's faces mm -hmm. to know that they have been through something that has been life-changing um, that's what we all want that's what San Diegans want and, and yet what we have seen particularly in the last two years that the situation on the streets is getting worse um, what's your thought is this a natural evolution are you seeing something different that didn't used to be and uh, and what should we be doing different? Well, I think it's a complicated issue. There's no doubt about it. And there's no quick fix. I mean, we've we've uh, taken several years to get to this place, and homelessness is as bad as it's ever been. There's more people with mental health problems, more people with drug and alcohol problems, more people with uh, challenges that they have to overcome that have really led them to the streets. But I, I think COVID exposed us for sure. Uh, people lost their jobs, and and they say most Americans are paycheck to paycheck anyway. Well, COVID exposed us because those month to month paycheck to paycheck people, I think a lot of them ended up on street. We've legalized drugs. Uh, I think that uh, the approach uh, of housing first does not work. I think there are others that agree with that, that the money that is being spent on this issue in the state of California has to be used for housing first, which just means that where the resources are being used are to get people off the street streets and into some kind of shelter without addressing the issues of their heart and so long term we haven't changed anything other well, than their location and, and I'll tell you I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I've I've seen you know so many folks that, that are understanding what you've already seen which is housing first we don't have the capacity to do that uh, and in fact what do you do with individuals that are on the street now um, and one of the linchpins to that in San Diego is you know, we have to have increased shelter capacity but mm -hmm. we don't because the two are tied hand in hand um, do we have enough shelter beds in San Diego? And what would you like to see differently? Well, we do not have enough shelter beds, but I think uh, that that's something that the politicians and electeds need to figure out and they need to address. I think that uh, if we could reallocate the housing first dollars, then maybe we could uh, build more shelters and, uh, and and more places like that. We, we're we adding a 50-bed shelter in Oceanside and a 162-bed shelter in National City that all be privately funded because we get that there has to be a place for people to go. Uh, you can't just... 
uh, talk them into getting the help and you can't you can't arrest them first that we got to have a place to send them to do triage and figure out where you go next I think there's also uh, needs to be a strategy to move people through the shelters the shelters can't be a landing spot and I think if you looked at the the registrations and the people that are in many of these shelter beds they've been there a while and so all that's doing Kevin is is uh, is clogging down the system so that we can't get other people through uh, to address the issues of homelessness and, and the issues of the heart and ultimately out living again and and having overcome homelessness so that other people can now uh, benefit from the programs that exist well I, I think you hit the nail on the head and and one of the things that I've always been impressed with Donnie uh, at the rescue mission is you it's not about just getting somebody off the street for a day or a night it's about how do we help somebody get back on their mm. feet how do we make you you know that that complete person um, so once you walk out of that Academy mm. once they have that graduation um, they're ready to stand on their own to feet they're ready to get that place uh, of their own one of the things that we have seen um, particularly in the last several years is, is really the rise of, of substance abuse and particularly fentanyl on the streets tell me how that's affecting what you are doing now versus what the rescue mission may have been doing you know five seven years ago well we have drug and alcohol classes as a part of our program uh, we uh, have people that come into our program every week and it doesn't take long for us to address kind of and assess them what what are your challenges and what are your issues and we've had people come in with a variety of addictions a lot of alcohol too and uh, and we're able through our case managers and through our therapists to really uh, address that uh, sometimes they're seeing uh, they're going to off-site clinics uh, many times they're they're seeing our therapist and they're going to our on-site classes and we feel like though that uh, that's a symptom uh, it's certainly something that's difficult to overcome but there's something deeper that's going on in there whether it was early childhood death whether it was physical abuse whether there was some dysfunction that happened in their past that actually has led them to want to mask all of the, the the fear and the doubts and the insecurities that they're experiencing uh, by using and by drinking at the level that they are when is somebody ready to break that cycle? You can't force somebody, obviously, into a shelter or into the rescue mission. How do you, how do you make that connection with folks on the street? Because I can't agree with you more. We have to get that person to say, I want to change. I want to do, you know, I want to intervene. How do you do that? You have to build trust. Uh, this is a relationship game, just like everything else, whether it's, uh, you know, sports or politics or business or it's a relationship game. And I, I think the unfortunate thing is, is that we look past people that are living on the streets. We walk past the people living on the streets. And I think if we can begin to engage them as a service provider and I think we're doing this and I think other service providers are doing this too as we engage them and really hear their story and get them to understand that we can really help them you know what part of the reason that people on the streets resist services isn't because they want to necessarily live on the streets because they don't trust anybody and they've had no, bad shelter experiences and so right. we've got to build trust and get them to the place where they know that we're going to help them we're going to stand by them as they go through this program couldn't agree with you more the ones that are doing one of the the best of the, in our city. We need, Thank you. we need more of you out there, my friend. Uh, I will tell you, coming up next, we're going to continue this conversation with Jared Wilson, who is president of the San Diego Police Officers Association, about